With more and more people working remotely now, many have considered moving to a different country and a lot of them choosing Mexico. Today we're going to take a look at what we consider to be the best city in Mexico, Querétaro. One man in Querétaro spoke for an increasing number of Mexicans. There's no reason to go abroad in search of a better life. There are good opportunities here. Why would you trust our opinion? Well, I went to university in Querétaro. I lived there for a total of five years. And in that time, I learned a lot about the city and I fell in love with it. So I'm excited to talk to you about why Querétaro is such a lovely city. What's attracting a lot of foreigners to Querétaro? Well, it could be a lot of things. It could be the beautiful historic downtown, the warm, mild weather year-round, the ease of transition from the U.S., the growing number of companies, and how centrally located it is in the country, making it a good place to travel from. Before exploring the surrounding neighborhoods, let's take a look at the historic downtown area. Out of all the cities we've visited in Mexico, Querétaro is by far the cleanest, and personally, it's been my favorite historic district that we've seen. There are plenty of cafes and restaurants. It's truly a lovely place for a stroll with friends or people watching. We loved coming to see people dancing in the plazas on Sundays. Whenever you talk about a whole city, there are obviously going to be some overgeneralizations, but for the most part, Querétaro is regarded as a middle-class city. There are a few reasons for this, including a lot of foreign companies coming to Querétaro to do a lot of their manufacturing. Querétaro is also a hub for the aeronautical industry for the world. It has a very strong wine and cheese industry. It has a lot of tourism. And with a middle-class population, of course, the service industry is also thriving. A lot of this development actually happened within the last 20 years. So if you compare what Querétaro looked like at the end of the 20th century to what it looks like now, there is a huge change. This means that the development of the city is very, very modern. So it has been growing according to the needs and desires of people today. This means that there are a lot of gated communities. There are a lot of international and private schools. There are a lot of huge gyms and a lot of the suburban amenities that you might expect if you live in a suburban area like in the U.S., for example. Querétaro is overall considered to be very safe. I'm not sure of the exact statistics anymore, but at one point it was one of the um, safest cities in the country, so it might also still be. Personally speaking, compared to where we live now in Mexico City, I definitely felt a lot safer in Querétaro. Not to say that I don't feel safe here in Mexico City, it's just that I noticed myself um, being way more aware of my surroundings and sometimes looking over my shoulder, but in Querétaro I, I never felt um, like I needed to be super on guard. Some of this might be due to the general slow-paced lifestyle that Querétaro has. It just feels, in Mexico City, of course, um, with everything moving around so much faster, you do kind of feel like you need to be more aware of your surroundings. In Querétaro, this isn't necessarily true. I would also say something that I realized in our most recent trip to Querétaro, where we basically covered the entire city, that no matter where you are in the city, it generally feels safe, it feels very clean. It doesn't have the stark contrast that you might see in a place like Mexico City in terms of, you know, like the levels of poverty and the levels of rich. Although we are sort of narrowing it down to what it's like to be in the neighborhoods and the like suburban amenities um, that we mentioned already, there is a lot of culture and a lot of like really beautiful colonial buildings and stuff uh, when you go to the downtown area of Querétaro. So you get to have a little bit of both whenever you live here. It's also very centrally located in the country and what I think is the mo is the richest part of Mexico in terms of colonial culture. 
While we were here, we took the opportunity to visit a few different residential neighborhoods to show you the differences between each one. But before we get started with that, let's take a look on a map to see exactly where these neighborhoods are and the overall layout of the city. First, I wanted to show the context of where Querétaro is in terms of the country of Mexico. Uh, for example, here is Cancun along the longitude line of about Alabama, and this is Baja, and this is Tijuana around California, and right in the center of the country in the Central Highlands region is Querétaro. So if we zoom in on the map of Mexico, if we zoom in further towards Querétaro, this is what we see. Honestly, the traditional city of Querétaro is around this. The historical downtown area is this area here, but along the perimeter of what was the original Querétaro is where you'll find the more modern regions like Juriquilla, Cibata, El Refugio, and near Cibata is this area of Sakya. I'll use Cibata as an example to show about the size of Querétaro. It's about as far away as you can get from the downtown area, and it takes about 15 minutes from the entrance of Cibata to get all the way downtown. That should pretty much give you the idea that if you are anywhere in this area, you're pretty much close to the center of the town and close to anything that Querétaro has to offer. So as you can see, even though it has a lot of cool things to offer, um, it's still a relatively small city, so you don't have to worry about all of the challenges that a major, larger city has. We are in Sakia right now, which is a neighborhood uh, pretty close to the neighborhoods of Cibata and El Refugio. These are the main neighborhoods that serve as the suburban sort of uh, neighborhoods of Querétaro. They're on the outskirts of it, about 15-20 minutes from downtown. And Sakia is the newer of the three. Um, a lot of the houses are still being built. It's about it's the same sort of style with um, lots of greenery, lots of parks, lots of gardening, and a lot of modern homes. Homes. Of the three, uh, I think because it's so new, it's still the cheapest one. So if that's what you're looking for, Sakia can uh, offer that. We are in Dibata now, which is a neighborhood where I lived for about one and a half or two years, and Sergio actually lived for even longer than that. Um, so it is very special to us. And the differences between this place and the last one is that it has double security. Um, so you have to go through security to get through the entrance and then another security to get into um, each community. It's huge, it has great views, it even has a golf course and it has more shopping areas. Since it's older than Sakia, it is more developed so there is not as much construction here. The next neighborhood that we visited is El Refugio, which is the closest to everything in the city. It has the most shopping and it's super close to grocery stores. As far as the houses in the neighborhoods, I think that it's the most diverse. It doesn't seem that there's a specific aesthetic that the neighborhood has. So you can get a modern house and then a not so modern house next to each other. We started off this morning at Jurica, which is this wonderful neighborhood that's really, really pretty. Unfortunately, it is a little bit um, more expensive, but you can definitely tell it's really, really nice. It's like cobblestone roads, really nice houses that are really like kind of country style. It's just like really Mexican, nice high-end homes. Uh, but now we are in Tejeda, specifically in Parque Tejeda, which is one of the more traditional neighborhoods in Querétaro that's really, really nice. Uh, really residential, it feels really comfortable, really family friendly. This park is really cute, it's not too pretentious, it is what it is and I love it for it. So honestly, like if you're not into the really modern aesthetic or the really polished um, gardening everywhere and all of that, like the first places that we showed you that were like Cibata, Sakia and El Refugio, um, this place is a really good option. It feels a little bit more like real, it has a lot more history to it, a lot more character I would say, so Tejeda that is a great option. There are a lot of small towns near Querétaro that are only a day trip away, so it's definitely a very good place to be. 
to back up why it's such a good place to live, going back to what we had mentioned previously of a lot of the amenities being so new, hospitals in the city, for example, whether they are private or public, are in very, very good condition. There isn't a short supply of these services, which is really good. Public transportation is adequate. One thing that surprised us in our recent visit, especially when we compare it to Mexico City, is how many really large, nice supermarkets there are in the city. So it's a very car-friendly place to live. There are a lot of options available for a very comfortable life. All right, that is going to wrap up this video. Thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure to subscribe if you're not already, and we will see you next Sunday. Bye.